listen to his story he he grew up in in you know the the worst the worst of the worst situations that a lot of us grow up to but um i want to lay this on my audience right now because after hearing this man's voice and his hearing his story you would never think that he walks around with a make america great again hat right you are you Man. are yes oh uh, I, I i don't know what other time nobody else done lived in mm-hmm break it down but i was i was born in 1977 I ain't never seen a black person hang from a tree. Break it down. I once, I once saw the Ku Klux Klan in 1986, but we was in Monroe, Louisiana, and they was doing a march, and I ain't hear them scream the word nigga. I killed a white man. We, I went to jail for killing a white man, homie. Something most niggas have never done or never even think about doing. I went inside an institution bragging about it. I had a white governor. I had a white judge. I had a white lawyer. I had a white prosecutor. Uh, and I got to see compassion. I had a white victim's family. I had white people, man. We killed that man and didn't have no remorse for it, man. And when I went back at 18 years old, man, them white people looked at me with tears in their eyes and say, man, we forgive you. Man, I know some. I know some niggas. If you walk through their grass, nigga, they won't forgive you. Mm-hmm. Let alone if you kill one of their family members. I remember in 1980, man, when you could, you can give, you can put beer in a baby's bottle, and you okay. didn't have to worry about CPS knocking on your door. Whiskey, if you had a toothache. Say, man, I remember in the 1980 when two black people fought. It was it was almost unimaginable to see you stomp and kick on another black man laying on the ground. Mm. I remember black people used to celebrate Juneteenth in the 1980. We got new clothes, man. I remember we had family reunions often in the 1980s, man. I remember black people used to have to be home by supper time and sit at the table and you used to have to say, can you pass me the potatoes? And y'all had to pass the tape. I remember, homie, when black people didn't shoot up each other's houses. I remember drive-by was unheard of in the black families. I remember when black people used to fight, homie, they used to have to literally kiss and make up or they got their ass whooped. Man, I remember... On Sundays, homie, in, in many black households, it was meals somewhere. I remember in the 80s, homie, when people got off on crack and ran off and left their children, anybody raised them. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Anybody raised them. They didn't mistreat them mm-hmm. or none of that, homie. Yeah. I remember them days. Now, if you can think back farther than that, when they used to kick a nigga in the ass, then you got every right to kind of say you don't remember when it was great, homie. I remember when you can commit a crime, my nigga, like murder, and they'll give you a second chance to redeem yourself at life. Mm. Break it down, dog. I remember, homie. I remember when school teachers was a lot older and they didn't dress sexy and you didn't fuck your teachers. Nigga, they really, they would come home and tell you, man, they would come home to teach you. Man, I remember it was used to be candy ladies in our community. Oh, yeah, everybody had a candy lady. Say, man, I remember, homie, when your neighbor could whoop your child. And it was understood that you didn't whoop that child for nothing. And when that child came home, they got another whooping. I remember when we when sagging first came, homie, and we were sagging our pants, and grown folks would ride down the street and holl out. Pull them goddamn pants up and all those but just pull them up. Don't know who we just know a grown person <laughs> said. I remember, homie. So I wore that hat with pride, my nigga. I remember in the 80s, homie, black people was making I men black people was was thriving. Even if they put crack in our communities, they didn't make us pick it up. Okay. Yep. We had some people that didn't touch it. We had some people didn't fool with it. Even though it was put there, even though that pausing is put on your table, we had some people didn't touch it because they knew it was pausing. Mm. So if I give you pausing and you know it's pausing, I ain't wrong. Mm-hmm. It's your choice to so, take that. So 
man, that's what I mean by I remember. And can't nobody else not make me remember those days, homie. The 1980s. Damn, what a good time that was. Hey, man, for real. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm your age, my man. I remember like it was yesterday, and it was a really good time. Even though I was too young to even really understand what was going on, it just it felt great, and to this day it feels great. And, yeah, that's why I wanted to let my audience know, man, this dude, um, you know what I'm saying? He's all, all um, you know, black folks who are on, on the right, they they don't all have this, the same story. I mean, this motherfucker grew up right next to you guys, and he decided to, to you know what I'm saying, go a different route and not follow, you know, the rest of of the, the, the sheep, I would say. But I want to— And guess what, homie? I, and, and, and I don't mean to cut you off, no. and, and I'm not the hood nigga. I'm the nigga— who mother, I'm the traditional, I'm the typical traditional child who come from the single parent home that comes out the middle class, upper middle class neighborhood that has the single mom who worked to provide the kids with all the name brand stuff, but he want to go back to the hood and the ghetto and act like his ghetto cousins who wish they could have what he have. I'm the, I'm the unappreciative kid who mother works hard to make it out the ghetto, and I put all that pressure on mama trying to act like those images because I never had that man. Mm. Yeah, man, that's so important. And all I'm going to say to end this is Charleston White 2024. We need you on the card, man. I hope you are at least <laughs> thinking of doing something locally. You know what I'm saying? Because the real talk, we need more people of color in in, in going into politics. Um, it's I'm the, really, I'm the really election. Important. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the election judge for every election cycle for the Tarrant County Republican Party. Uh, I've been nominated uh, to be a precinct chair, which is an elected position where my name will be on the ballot. Uh, so, man, uh, I, I'm a, I, I, I'm a, I'm a conservative nigga. <laughs> I who like just that. So happens. I need Listen a shirt. To me, I'm, a con I'm a conservative nigga. <laughs> who just so happens to vote Republican because the Republican platform kind of embraces my conservative values that Muddy and them taught out that bomb. That's what's up, dude. That's what's up. And hopefully I can have you on again and we can we can go more onto the political side closer to November. Anytime, brother. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Um, please uh, let everyone know where they can follow you. Oh, man, follow me on Instagram, white underscore Charleston. Uh, check me out on YouTube, Charleston White, Uncle Tom Management. Or follow me on my 13 Facebook pages, man, Charleston White. You go and do it. You must get, you <laughs> must get flagged. I got an album coming out, too, uh, man. I got an album dropping on, on, on Juneteenth, man, June 19th. The name of the album is called We Are Fucked Up as a Race of People. Oh, damn. Okay. Nice, man. Make sure you guys check my dude out, and we'll have you on uh, in the future. Charleston White, everybody. Thank you, man. Have a great night. All right. God bless, brother. Peace, Doc. Yes, sir. On the line, we have Lydia. It'd be like drama on the blade. Like, I got shot at my first oh, night. She's like, give me a gun, daddy. What's the difference between having a pimp and not having a pimp? He's like your mentor. He teaches you the game. And um, basically, he gives you guidance. I left him because he was a gorilla. A gorilla pimp? Me, beat me. I can't go home Long Island because I'll get killed. <laughs> Take us back to the night that you um, that you turned your first trick. So what's um like one of the craziest things that you've seen walking the blade? Mm -hmm. He pulled a gun on you? Yeah, I'm like, I don't even have nothing. I ran into traffic. You were recently considering committing suicide. I got raped by a trick fight. He went for he went for free head. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Domino. What up, DJ Domino? If it wasn't for this, that the little wicked wicked book of book of sounds and all that, you know. I might have gangbanged. Yeah. There was a couple of places where we did have to shut down because there was a body outside. What do you remember about when crack cocaine hit the streets? I was Dub C beatboxer. Do you remember if he was banging back then? Because apparently he was he was he was a real you know real street dude at one oh, point. Oh yeah, yes, definitely. What do you remember about Rod Dion and Joe Cooley coming together? What do you remember about the peace treaty? Bailed out the guards, seen blue and red everywhere. Look how strong we are. You um kind of did something, and, you know, got all the bloods and the crips together. Only a very cult following type of people remember N O 
ATS. This might be an exclusive <laughs> on your show. <laughs> <laughs>